Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont show. I'm Bruce Wilson. I'm here with an incredible guest, but we'll talk to our guests in a few minutes as we make some announcements. And so, um, Art So Wonderful um, is one of our programs, and it's um, on August 3rd, we're going to have a, a mural project uh, program or just an event down in uh, Thorson's Way um, near um, Aches Place in Red Square. It's this alley that is called Art So Wonderful Alley in Thorson's Way now. It's going all the way around the corner, and it's going to be incredible. So we're asking these community members to come up, come down, and or it's, right now send, send designs to us um, by August 3rd from 11 to 6, and to send us uh, designs and come down and help paint by numbers. It's going to be like a paint by number thing where people can come and, and paint, you know, we will have um, murals where people come out and paint by numbers, and they put that. that. And that cool. It's gonna be so awesome. Yeah. Last we did it for Juneteenth, and like yeah. over sixty people came and did it, and that was so nice. So it's gonna be so fun. There's the um, posters up on the, on people's screen, and um, and so we're we're so happy about that. Um, what happens is too, it's a lot of graffiti be covered over, and it's beautiful murals be down there. We will all change as often as we feel like it. You know, so eleven. Um, so right now, too, we have through our um, poetry um, pioneer um, <coughs> contest. We have a contest for poetry uh, writers or anybody who just want to try to hand out it to um, be on our podcast show, and to, that's your winning. That's how you win, and um, submit uh, um, um, art. I mean, uh, poetry. <laughs> Get out to that. Get it. <laughs> submit poetry to our uh, contest and win. So just go look up poetrypioneer.com. So now, I'm so happy and excited once again. You know, I see my good friend Elaine Haney around town a lot. We, just, I think, we sit on some boards and stuff together. Yeah. And um, yeah. so I see her now and then. But it's always good to see you. You know, on our show. I, I know you've been on our show before. Happy to and, be back. Uh, it's great to be here. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And people love you. And you know, you got a lot of. You know, you, you're very, um, you know, important in our community communities. We say the state of state of Vermont <laughs> that way. <laughs> and, um, and I'm so happy when, when you say, yeah, I'll come on your show. You know, oh, but, anytime. I know, because <laughs> you, you, you've done it before. You know, you came on the show before. We had a, another good conversation, good time, and people learned about what you were doing. So, so some one things I didn't think I talk about um, um, before, um, I know you're the executive, um, you're the executive of Emerge Vermont. Yep. And so let's talk about that for a minute. But sure. Uh, we will talk about that, shall I say. But right now, you also have been a public service for so many years, you know, with uh, probably the town of Essex or city of Essex. Essex Which Junction. It? <laughs> Actually, both. I've, I've done public service in both communities. Right. And so are you still working with Essex or, any, or sit on any board, select board or anything like that? I'm or? a city councilor in Essex oh. Junction. Yeah. Oh, that's just, yeah. okay. So we became a city in 2022. Right. And prior to that, mm -hmm. I had been a village trustee because we were a village before we were right. a city. And um, between being a village trustee and a city councilor, I was a member of the town of Essex Select Board. Wow. It's very yeah. confusing, right. now, village you know, and town, but um, yeah, no, we're well, separate confusing now. Confusing councilor and, and um, select board. That's confusing to me. Well, towns have select boards, cities have councils. That's really the only difference. Oh, oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, like the um, S's, um has select boards. Correct. All right, so that's, that's Greg Dugan. Duggan, he's Greg Duggan, that's right. He's the manager at Essex mm -hmm. Town. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, he, I like him a lot. I remember when he was like, the assistant in. Um, right. What was, his, what, what was the other guy's name? That was, well, we had Evan Teach prior, Evan, to, uh, yeah. prior to Greg, and then right. prior to Evan, we had Pat Scheidel, who was yeah. the manager of both the town of Essex and the city of Essex, or village of Essex Junction. So, we have had the good fortune of having some really excellent yeah. managers. And now Essex Junction has Regina Mahoney as oh, our city that, manager. Yeah, I talked to her, yeah. She's great. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. should have Regina on. No, down, down. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying you, you said it. She, she, you heard it all, people. <laughs> <laughs> She's on vacation right now, so she doesn't know that I told, her, told you that. <laughs> so, so, so um, since we talk about Essex, Essex Junction, mm. um, um, so I know, so you share like the, um, like uh, police services and what, what do you share together? You know, so now that we have separated into two different municipalities, the police department is one of only two things that we share anymore. Um, Essex Junction and Essex Town both pay for the Essex Police and it is a town department but the building is located in Essex Junction and it's just an illustration of our yeah. combined history for many years. You mean, you mean the police? No, the city, no. Police department is in 
the police department building is this in is, Essex Junction. It's on Maple right. Street, just right. past yeah, I know, the park. I, know. I, I work around <clears throat> Chief Hope. Mm -hmm. Chief Hope. Yeah, all the time. And um, and then um, so is. Oh, so, and the fire department, all that is right there in Essex Junction, too? Well, Essex Junction has its own fire department at Five Corners, and then the town of Essex has its own fire department out in the town. Okay. So we share the police department, and the only other department we share at the moment is Assessor. So um, currently we are undergoing reappraisal of all the homes in Essex Junction and Essex Town, and once that reappraisal is completed, we will move on to having um, to separating that process. I that is that is the plan at the moment, but we may decide to just continue working with the town of Essex assessor. But that's down the road. Down the the reappraisal is not yeah. complete. So how do um? So it's very you know Essex Essex Junction is very unique you know in, in particular for places in Vermont. Mm. And so the real estate you got an incredible real estate out there. You have you know you have a Average homes, you know, like 200 plus, and then you go way up, you know what I mean, like um, two S's, two S's way and all, all that, those right, areas. Right. And so, so the assessor's job is to assess properties tax based on what the tax value is, right? Correct. And so, um, how did that happen? You know, because like on some of those blocks, you know, you have 200 some thousand dollar homes, let's say, on the, hypothetically, I don't I just know to do how they look, you know what I mean? Okay. And some of you might have like half a million on half. So how do you yeah. assess properties like that on the same block? That's well, I'm, I'm, def I'm not an assessor, so I have no expertise in sure. this area, but the basics are that the size of the property, the size of the house and the footprint, like how much of the house takes up how much of the property, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the number of parking spaces. There's pieces of each building that have value. And then there's also a comparables aspect. So you get a house that has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and a two-car garage, and you compare it to all the other houses that have three bedrooms, two baths, sure. and two-car sure. garage. So it's a huge formula. Mm. And, but that can be why there's variation on a street, that one house is worth X and another house is worth more than that. The average home price in Essex Junction and Essex Town is $280,000. And then... Um, go to everywhere. Yeah, and as you know, they, there's some that are far higher than that. Oh, no doubt and, right. you know, new construction happening in Essex Junction and mm -hmm. Essex Town is, right. you know, it's like $500,000. The right. houses are expensive. Yeah. And I think that's attributable to the cost of equipment, the cost of materials, the cost of land. Um, and then, you know, up until very recently, Act 250 was involved, you know, has not been changed for years. And now the legislature just made a big <laughs> overhaul of it. Um, so we'll see how that impacts um, building in Essex Junction. Yeah. But particularly in dense areas like our downtown, we're already exempt from Act 250 for most. Um, oh, really? Yes, yeah, oh. very small I know section. you can be exempt from taxes. You from can, depending upon where you're located, but that has now Essence changed. Is County? Okay. That's right, but that has now changed, so now we, we've yet to see how that's going to impact our community. Wow, that's, that's a big <clears throat> deal, you know what I mean? Because, you know, good or, it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't got to look at Act 250, it's all good because they want to preserve the, Absolutely. The state, how Vermont look, and you, we don't want you to go no different to how things might have been and you know, put it back to the same way. But one thing about um, um, Act 250, though, is like, you know, and I'm glad it's changed, and I've heard something about it somewhere, it's probably through one of the boards we sit on, but um, uh, is that, um, you know, because of the housing shortages, right? Yep. And then, you know, Vermont, you know, like, you know, a parking space can cost you just as much as a house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I'm so glad that things have changed. You can put parking underneath the buildings now. It's just yeah. changed, you know, yeah. and a lot of things. And um, you can go up a little higher. Right. So you know, higher that's on your, that's on your what own. Essex Junction's really only recourse is. Our Essex Junction is only four and a half square miles. It's mm -hmm. a tiny really? little. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's small. Not as small as Winooski, which is one, one point, square mile. 1.7. 1.7. But right now. Like, no. you, just, <laughs> like okay. you just said, though, apartment buildings yeah. with parking below is in going up yeah. is what our options are. Sure. Like there's very few places where you can actually build single family homes in Essex Junction. Whereas in Essex Town, there is a lot of acreage. That's a 30, not including oh. Essex Junction, it's like a 30 square mile municipality. Yeah. So they have a lot more space. However, a lot of that is conserved. Some of it's wetland, you can't build on all of it. So it's gonna be an interesting conversation going forward to see where the development occurs. I think the new Act 250, 
legislation is designed to make most new housing occur in dense areas that already have a lot of housing so that we can leverage transportation and pedestrian access and that kind of thing all in one area. Mm, that's cool. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, trying to look at the map in my own little tiny brain. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> IBM, um, um, what, what town, is, where is that located? Global the, Foundries is Global in Foundries. Essex Junction. Okay. All right. So how's that, you know, how's the tax... I don't know, you're not a tax assessor, but I'm just curious because we're talking about it a little bit. But how how does the tax split? I guess it's got to be a split somehow. Well, Global Foundries is assessed just like personal homes and other local businesses. Okay. And so Global Foundries pays taxes based on their property assessment, which is also going to be going under undergoing reappraisal of its own, just a different reappraisal than you would for a house. Right. And um, Global Foundries also ha uses water from our wastewater treatment plant. So, you know, we receive revenue from Global Foundries for their purchase of water. Um, but many, many years ago, many years ago, it was a different story where there was a machinery and equipment tax in place that they would pay Essex Junction for all of the machinery and equipment on their campus. But that began to be phased out. And then I think in 2004, they, they were done paying it. And so the t village of Essex Junction lost a substantial amount of tax revenue from that business and then had to make it up by raising the rates on residents. And, um, but that's, that we're talking 20 years ago that stopped. Yeah. So Global Foundries is not necessarily like, people like to think that we have this huge business in Essex Junction and it's this cash cow and it's not. It's just they're, they're paying well, their Well it used way. to be right, the, um, it's called a bl big blue. Mm -hmm. the big blue. Well, um, Global Foundries is also like enormous, and they employ yeah. thousands of people, sure. and um, they're still absolutely essential. And I b believe yeah. they're the largest uh, private employer yeah. in Vermont. Oh, are they private? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. And they do microcircuits and uh, um, things like that still, um, semiconductors and mm -hmm. ROMs. Right. Um, so, um, oh, since we talk, because my mind, I'm, I'm running through S's, you know, S and S's actually. Um, that dam that comes down. Yeah. Now, now is that I know. Do um, global foundries get use energy from that dam? Or? That is a Green Mountain Power mm -hmm. Dam, and Global Foundries <clears throat> has their own wastewater treatment plant on site. But okay. they, I, I'm I'm not sure if they draw energy from that dam. I mm -hmm. can't I can't really answer yeah. that. Yeah. But um, it it is. Managed by Green Mountain Power. Yeah, it's so cool to see when you go past those, you know, coming down. Well, and what is, what during is our flood events, oh, it God. has been astonishing to see how high the water rises that? in that dam. It's <laughs> kind of scary. And you know, I'm from Winooski, so I'm at the Winooski River. You know, the Winooski yeah. River you know, flood. Oh, that yeah, was um, that was something intense. else. Yeah. Wow, that was very high up too, and yeah. I was like, look, like in, like other spectators who shouldn't have been near, kind of close to it. Yeah, just kind of shaking it out because I mean, last so year, unique. the big flood last year. I was told the water rose to just over 23 feet, wow. and this year's flooding from a couple, like a week or two ago, it was up to 18 wow. feet. So now, what was the name of that flooding a couple of weeks ago? I don't think we had a name for it. <laughs> I think we're just going with the date on that. But I think it was a result of the uh, um, tropical storm Barrel, uh, okay, which had been a hurricane down south. But All once right. they move up the right. coast and they come to us, it's right. a soaking rain event. So right. yeah. Bad. Uh, so, you know, Vermont, is, we've been very lucky, though. And I don't say lucky, this is, it works in the divine order, that's how it works. I mean, we just incredible um, demographics and, you know, people and, and um, you know, we've just been in a good place where we don't have, like, you know, must lives or forest fires or, you know, all these incredible yeah. environmental um, um, situations. We're you know? fortunate we don't have those those really chaotic kinds like of things. But the, but the <laughs> right, it could be worse. <laughs> mm. But I think mm. the, the the historic flooding we've been having mm. is rapidly it's becoming weird. a new mo new normal, and that's mm. a real problem. It is because um, it eats away our infrastructure. It does. I mean, really. I mean, I have friends who have places like lying around on lakes, whatever. Yeah. My God, they lost like, uh, since, and through the years, lost like. Ten feet. Right, right. Uh, it's they, washing you know, away. You know what ten yeah. feet is from awful. Um, yeah, awful, and it's displacing um, scores of Vermonters. Yeah. Houses are being destroyed, and entire towns are built around riverbeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to rethink how yeah, we true. how we lay out our communities and where we move those yeah. homes and businesses to keep them out of harm's way. Well, what do you, how do you how are we gonna do that? You know, like you know, we we only um. Like the government told me, Bruce, we know we serve 667,000 people. So we're only, we're, we're Vermont, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not um, yeah. 
Um, we do have, we still have some green land. I mean, whereas nothing's oh, yeah. been um, built on yet, yet, you know. Uh, but how are we going to do that? How are we going to keep um, business and community housing out of harm's way of um, environment? I really think flooding, we have to. Flooding. I really think. Yeah. was coming down from my, my people still like eat away. Oh all yeah. Of that, oh my God, that was pitiful. Absolutely, I mean, and you, know, I think we really have to rethink what our downtowns look like, and we have to, in some ways, sacrifice buildings and businesses and homes and relocate them or reconfigure and anticipate that riverbeds change. Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately that involve that would involve a lot of sacrifice on on people's part because if we want to remove those businesses from harm's way and also protect the river from mm -hmm. the the materials that flow Our into it. Right. Kind of the stuff, oil, oil, gas, oil, yeah. everything that's it going into the, the river when it gets flooded, it's yeah. terrible. So how yeah. can we we have to move uphill, we have to move out of the watershed area, we have to move out of the riverbed, and that's enormously expensive, and you know, FEMA payments take too long to arrive, mm -hmm. and there's only yeah. so much money to go around, so sure. it's a hard conversation all over Vermont. Some of our friends who have some, some lakefront stuff put uh, retainer walls around, mm -hmm. it, and those things, they work, they work very well. They can help. They, they, do work there. they can help. Yeah. But it works, you know, at least it keeps your, your land, you know, your property, yeah. you know, you still have it. If but you're having a hundred year not, flood every pretty, five years, that's... It's not a pretty thing to see those brick, those concrete big old blocks around, you know, yeah. that's not pretty at all, you know, yeah. especially uh, around a lakefront type of view. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's not good. So, so you guys are, <clears throat> in essence, uh, just junction. So Essex experience is coming around nice, huh? Is what a that, great is that place. Part of Essex? It's part of Essex town, but I mean, it's a part of the fabric of the Essex community. And I remember when it was built, and I remember we used to call it the outlets because yeah, yeah. that was where you went to get all the discounted, yeah, really Brooks nice Brothers stuff. Church, bro. Right, Brooks Brothers and mm. uh, Polo was out there, oh. and I believe the landlord an owner of that property always had a vision to fill it with local businesses, oh, yeah. and they got there. It's really impressive. I know. I know. So I many love that restaurants place. and so many local businesses Art in this. Gallery, yeah, I love stores, going there. And they've got the concerts on the lawn and really it, it has come such a long way. It's yes. a great place. It's a wonderful place to go for dinner and yeah, a show the, and the flannel, black flannel. Black flannel's awesome. Yeah. They got distilleries. <laughs> I mean they got brewer, breweries and distilleries. They I got think. brewery, distillery, and yeah, <laughs> the, it's it's an amazing I place. Love one there. Great <laughs> menu too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the, the food is good. No, those burgers. Mm, mm, the burgers mm. are so good. Mm, yeah, mm, mm. yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. The pretzel appetizers also oh, oh, really I, great. I, they, <laughs> one day I worked with um, with the um, town of Essence to do a, a event, um, like um, I forget what we call it. We did it for two years too, and I was like we was um, doing a big event. Essence was appreciating people, and like we had an Essence experience, had live entertainment, and people would come. Um, and they received like a fifteen dollar. Um, oh right, yeah, out and about. Out and about. Yes, yeah. I did what it for a great twice. idea. I yeah. did, yeah, that was a good idea. And then um, all you do is come, you know, you, you know, you, what's your name, uh, you know, and then you get the um, you live in Essence, you get the uh, out and about um, voucher or whatever it was. Exactly. And you can eat anywhere it's there. It's, that, yeah. And, uh, and I was there doing a survey, um, letting them know that if they they could apply for being on any um, um, city boards or committees or yeah, and, and get. Uh, stipends from them, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And um, and so that's and if they did that, they can get an extra another uh, um, voucher. Oh, that's whatever. a great idea. And yeah. Then, so we did that, you know. And, and um, but I'm telling you, so one of the things that um, we were trying to identify, we wanted to identify more of people of color, you know, to um, to um, be on these boards and committees yes. and commissions that um, SS, SS town, SS um, junction have to offer. Yeah. For, uh, people and, f and exactly they need to be on them because they're um we're they we're they're, we they are part of the people who we serve absolutely and, 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 and when you want to build things out there they you know i mean they um they um kind of come play their water bill or whatever but the thing is that when i found about it um is that and i'm telling you what i did i only found nobody nobody no person of color to give a, a, a coupon to hmm. nobody out of all those people that came. Interesting. And I know for a fact, people who look like me, I'm from Chicago, right? Um, if you say there's gonna be some free food there and refreshment, and I'm gonna get a $15 uh, uh, coupon, <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. So I'm a communication com gap, they didn't know. See, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I was, you know, I told Greg and the chief and everybody, I'm like, listen, and like, um, we need to start doing more, find out where people of color, BIPOC, 
uh, live. Absolutely. Where they live at. Yeah. Where are they? You know where they live at, yeah. but you know what? You got to go promote to them. You got to put right. it, and you got to do it by boots on the ground. Like, you know, that's how you and I, we are. We're boots on the ground. Yeah. And um, go see, go to where they live and talk to them in their communities, yeah. at their libraries or the schools or wherever, in the front of the house or whatever. They got to do it like that. And um, no one has done it yet. And so, <clears throat> and a little, I'm a little upset about that. A little yeah, bit. you know, Bruce, there's a disc. I, I've, having served on a lot of different mm -hmm community boards, there is a disconnect between wanting public participation and having the understanding and the capacity to go out and get it. Because right. what you have to do is not just put something on your website and send up a front porch forum and do a Facebook post. You have to find people where they are. Right. What are the newspapers or media outlets, online outlets that communities of color communicate with on a daily basis? Where are the Facebook groups? How do you go to event, Go to events where people are meeting and give information out there? It is a lot of work, it is a commitment, and it is really, really important. And I've yeah. yet to see a municipality in Vermont do a good job at it. And so I would, you know, I, I work with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns on their equity advisory committee, along with um, Elaine Wong and, and lots of really wonderful people um, throughout Vermont, and our goal is to create a toolkit to help municipalities identify the communities of color in their municipalities and then mm -hmm. deal with inc increasing their ability to communicate with them yeah. because they're not going to volunteer for committees. They're not going to come to events. They're not going to come get their free coupons right. if they don't know. They know nothing about it. And, and it's just the responsibility of the municipality to do better at that. Yeah, it's very, it's very important, and they, they got to do better. You know, I'm a human rights commissioner for the state of you Vermont. You are, yes. And so, and I, and I see a lot of anti-racism and boards and committees, and I, I, it pisses me off. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm mad about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I know it's just uh, we like 0.1 percent of or, or African Americans in the state of Vermont, or whatever, maybe a little higher. You know, I'm saying it's like 98 percent white. You know, but but it's still you got to you know we still live here. But we you know what? <clears throat> the 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 growth in in county from 2010 to 2020, according to the census, was entirely people of color. Nice. It, Chittenden County is growing. We all know this, we see it, we hear about it, but what we're not realizing is that the people who are making it grow are people of color. Right. So the population is rising substantially and we have to rise to the moment to meet that and make sure that you are all getting what you need, you're hearing the information that you need to hear, and that you're participating in an equal way that everybody else. Yeah. Well, you know, I know we, we, you, 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 Lane, Lane Wong, working together. She don't take no, she don't take no crap. We read a lot sometimes. I admire coffee. Elaine she, Wong she be like, so she's much. Tough. She's tough on, especially <laughs> she's, like, she's tough on, especially when about um, her race relations. She is. You know, she's really tough on that. Yeah. And I appreciate She holds that. everybody's uh, feet to the fire that's and right. has expectations that that's you're going right. to do what you say, and that is incredibly important. I know, I know, I, I know, and so you know, I, I like her style on them. Yeah, you know, I like her um, um, a mission of goals and objectives for helping people who who look in everybody, but you know, definitely yeah. persons of color. Um, and so, so another thing too, uh, so we're talking about Essence, um, um when when Essence did the National Night Out, mm. um, for, I think we're going on our third or fourth year now. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. maybe our fourth year. Oh, no, yeah, we're going to the fourth year, I think. And so the first year, I was going to do a big event. And um, because after that event, where I didn't get no coupons to no person of color, I couldn't believe it. No, I couldn't even, I couldn't run down a car and give somebody something, you know what I'm saying? Because nobody was there. Yeah. Pissed me off. And I'm thinking there was so many people there. Anyways, um, so because of that event, because of that, I said, I'm going to put an event. And I'm inviting everybody. So I went to the... Um, you know, like the African American Church and everybody, and I, and I was putting this big event on in Essence to um, for people of color, anybody, but just going like live music band. You know uh -huh. how we do it. You know, make it really nice and yeah. get people to be involved and based on their cultures or, or traditions. You know, just have them. You know, yeah. do things. And um, it um, <clears throat> right there at um, in in Essence, I was um, what's the name of the thing? Um, uh, where the um, I, I'm not. I'm blank right now. Where uh, Essence Way? Oh, uh, right, right. In in uh, park, in the Essence Experience. Essence Experience. Yeah, yeah. right there, on the, right there on the green. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna do it right there. And so the chief heard up about the, about it, and um and uh, Ch um, Chief Hogue, uh, Hogue, um, Ron Hogue said, Bruce, listen, um, I'm coming. I need you to help me with something. I said, what is it? He said, I we've never done this before. National now. I know you've done some. I did was work with um, 
South Burlington, they was doing they was doing all the time, so we used to do stuff with them yeah. with uh, National Night Out. And he thought I was, and I thought it was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, why? You know, people because you know, and plus they were having little situations with people of color in essence at that time. You know, they won't let them know that you know some things could be actually that incident or something. This is not our. Um, this is not our fair and partial policing uh, policy, you know what I mean, whatever, you know. And so we want to show you that, you know what I mean, that we care about our communities, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and so we're going to put this national night out. That's what they do across the country. Yeah. You know, and so so I have to pull that together the first I one. didn't know that, yeah, Bruce. And, and, That's and, amazing. And, and so this year, all of them. So um, I laid back last year because they had uh, they got this new Jackson or uh, somebody, a new guy doing it. But okay. So, so I went to it, of course, you know, because I'm, you know, um, Rotary as well, Rotarian. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, Anyways, so when I went there, I still didn't see nobody in Lula look at me. So for, you know, I was like, what? You yeah. know, nobody looked. So I told the chief that I'm coming into this year planning, I'm going to want to be a part of the planning commission meetings to um, help um, bring in people of color, bring in people who um, normally are not a part of this, you know. Yeah. So this year I'm going to plan the committee for um, awesome. National Night Out. And, um, you know, and I just want to see um, at least five black people there, people of color, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You know who has a great um, Essex View, which is the Voices, Voices something Essex Westford. Oh, that's his high school? Is that the high school? I but it's so. also with the school board, oh, school district. Oh, okay. And they have put on numerous um, cultural events and they are very, very attentive mm -hmm. to making sure that communities of color aren't involved. That might be a great yeah. connection for yeah. National yeah, so, Night cause, Out. Yeah, yeah, because, um, you know, it'd be packed, like 500 people be there. Yeah. You know, it's a lot, it's, it's incredible. It's everything with the mission goals and objectives of a National Night Out should be. One thing we don't, we couldn't put it into it that the chief thought was kind of tricky to do was mm. the parade, because it's supposed to start with a parade. Yeah. But we never could do it because huh. the way, I don't know. I don't know why. I told him we should start the parade from the police station on down to the Essex High School. Mm. You know, that's been a great little walk. It's not that far, you know, but I right. think that would have been good. I'm, 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 I'm asking about that this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so let's talk about Emerge Vermont. <laughs> sure. That's, you know, this is this is the this is so important. You know, my one of one of my youth board members in Rutland, she was my youth board um, president. You know, she used to go with me all this, like the Governor's Institute, all the uh -huh. stuff we used to do for many years. You know how stuff would do for youth and take them to um, all kind of stuff and learn. And she ran our youth center in, in Denver Mall, you know, with our other youth advisory board. Kiana McCoy. Oh, my goodness. She was one of our alum this year. She was in the class of 2024. She's on the board of aldermen now. Yes, in that no. she, she, I like, she did, like, you know, a lot of, you know, when people tell me they inspired to do the things like, like they was, like, they learned from me or something like that, and just that spirit of energy, well, they, they had it anyway to be a part of the stuff. It, it makes me feel so good. So many people have said to me, I didn't know a lot of those things, especially about, um, she was uh, went to Emerge Vermont. Yeah, you know. she just graduated, and mm -hmm. we had we had a great class of sixteen people, so smart. including also Lydia Diamond, yeah. who is someone that everyone sure. knows here in Chittenden County, sure. and sure. Um, they graduated on June first. One of them is running for the state house. Um, she's running for a seat f representing Milton right now, and um, we have forty eight alums on the ballot, <gasps> at the primary ballot. There's a lot of um, elected in incumbents who are running for re-election, and they have a, a large number of new first-time candidates nice. also running. So we're very nice. excited for nice. August 13th to so see how they So let's talk do. about Emerge Vermont. Now tell them, let's, let's give, um, well, what is what exactly what, it, what it's so about? So the short story is we recruit and train Democratic women to run for office. So with you, we have a, cor a course that you take from January to May, and it gives you all of the nuts and bolts about how to run for office, how to fundraise, how to develop your message, how to develop a campaign plan, how to canvas, how to get endorsements, all sorts of stuff like that. And then you um, use that knowledge to run your race. And we've had hundreds, we've well over 200 people now have gone through our program. Wow. And a lot of them, 67% of them have run for office at no some kidding. point. And currently 45% of our alums are actually in office. Maybe it's a select board, maybe it's a school board, state house, uh, Secretary of State Sarah Copeland Hanses, and uh, Attorney General Charity Clark are our alums, and our very first Congresswoman from Vermont, Becca Ballant, graduated from our first class. So we're she came in on my show. Did she really? Yeah. yeah, she's rock star. So we're we're really proud of our alums, and we're really proud of the effectiveness of our training. Yeah, yeah. 
Is uh, the Keisha go come Keisha Ram come, come, Keisha Ram Hinsdale is one of our co-founders. She was present at the creation when Governor Kunin decided she wanted to bring Emerge to Vermont. I know. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? She's awesome. We meet we meet a lot of you know, she's so smart, you know. She's so smart and she's, she's a she's, great she's representative. Very connected, like yeah. crazy. Incredibly, yeah. yeah. She's incredibly connected, right? And so man, so so do you so um so any men are part of your, any, not necessarily the 20s, but part of the board or anything else? Our know? board is entirely women. They should be. We do know. have a group, a donor circle called Men for Emerge Vermont, which is a large group of men who support the work we're doing because there's a lot of men out there who realize that women are not represented equally at the tables of leadership, and they really support what we do. So we are very grateful to them. And they also sponsor every fall, uh, excuse me, every spring, our local candidate spotlight when we have an event where all of our alums who are running for local office give their stump speeches. Mm -hmm. And we always have a prominent male speaker, and it's always sponsored by the Men for Emerge Vermont. That's so nice. they're essential partners. Nice, nice. You know, um, Lane, you know, you know, having you know, there's a spot for you. There's a like you know. I mean, you know, I think I think the race for governor is coming up. You know, I know for a fact if you'd be an incredible governor, <laughs> governess. Well, how do you say it? I don't know. What is it? Governor. Go governor. You know? <laughs> Not governess. Very different. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, did the governor say that? <laughs> Take that back, <laughs> governor, and um, you'll win. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. There is so much going on at the at the state level with folks kind yeah. of holding tight because our current governor is running for re-election. Yeah. Although we do have the amazing Esther Charleston running for the Democratic uh, nomination for governor this year, and she graduated from Emerge last uh, in 2022. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. there's a lot of room for a woman governor. We haven't had one since Madeline Kunin. It's time for Madeline. another. <laughs> I love seeing her. Every time I see her, She's, she knows me like she's still bro. She knows she's still. Yeah. You know, it's, she's tough, boy. And, like, she was a uh, case around, like, mentor, boy. Yes, real. she was. Yeah, she's is. a hero of mine. I Still admire is. her so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, well, are you going to think about running for any um, high office some, anywhere else? At the moment, I'm very happy being a city councilor in Essex Junction. <laughs> and, yeah, some, you know, I tell my classes, politics is more, more than the money, more than the network. It's about timing. And who knows if something opened up, I might. But at the moment, I'm really happy being yeah. a counselor in Essex Junction. That's right. You're doing an incredible job. You're doing a good job. And, um, Thank you. And I know a lot of people who went through your um, program, Emerge Vermont, and I'm um, so happy they did. They're so smart. They are so smart. They always come to the program already rock stars. Yeah, we just give them a already? few extra tools. I yeah. know. And then you help them too. You know, kind of help them with um, Absolutely. You know, people who you might know in the community that can you know. Build oh them yeah, up, boost, I boost them. That's part of the deal. Exactly. I serve as sort of a. Uh, advisor mentor to a lot of women who are running and the Emerge Network is really the most valuable thing. There's over 200 alums as I said and they all support each other. We we go to our the honking waves, we contribute money, we work, we share our expertise. It's a very tight network and it produces incredible candidates. <laughs> nice, yeah. I know you do. So we got like one minute, two minutes. So can you, what's the last thing you want to say? You want, uh, you want to, um, well, I'll tell you, I'd love something? to, yes, I'd love to tell folks that August 1st, I think that's, your camera that's my camera, August 1st, the Emerge Vermont application for the class of 2025 will open online. And so if you are considering running for office sometime in the future or maybe in the next cycle, or if you're interested in becoming someone who works on campaigns and wants to support other women running for office, Emerge Vermont is for you. So visit emergevt.org and you can learn more. I'm always happy to have conversations about your potential, and I hope we see lots of new applicants when it opens in August. No doubt about Thanks it. for the thank, chance, Bruce. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. So thank you for coming on Straight Talk for Monster. I'm going to stand up and give you a Absolutely. Thank you. That's my friend. <laughs> Well, it was good to see you. Yeah. And let me know if I can help any ways I can. You know, I can I can hold a sign. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Run down the street or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bruce. Yeah. It was great to see you and yeah. happy to be on the yeah, show. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Straight Talk Vermont Show. I'm Bruce Wilson here with Elaine Haney from Emerge Vermont. Have a good day. Thank you.